All right, shall we begin? Let's begin. Let's begin. <laughs> all right. Well, welcome to all who have arrived. Uh, if you come to one DrupalCon presentation, this is the one that you should come to because we're gonna show you some really cool things and the energy that Johnny Grubb provides in a presentation cannot be matched by man or woman or beast. Thought I was the hype man here. Oh yeah, sorry, role reversal. <laughs> Um, yeah, so my name is Mike. I am the um, CTO at a company called Tandem, which is a digital agency, but I'm also one of the engineers of Lando, which is a, uh, a developer tool, primarily a, a local development um, environment, uh, which is used by many developers, particularly in the Drupal space, but it works for all kinds of local development. Um, its purpose primarily is to replace something like Vagrant uh, for local development. So that's like sort of the goal in mind. Um, and then we also have uh, Mr. John Grubb here as well, who I think can introduce himself I can, better than me. I can, uh, yeah. So I'm John Grubb. I'm the director of customer care. So I, I lead basically the entire post sales team at Platform SH. So um, customer success managers who are essentially account managers and take care of uh, basically whatever needs taken care of and the technical account managers who largely function as onboarding engineers. So all of our enterprise clientele that come to Platform SH, uh, it is basically my team that's in charge of, of adapting you technologically and then making sure you stick around and have a good time uh, ongoing. And yeah, thanks for that picture, um, Mike dug that up out of the internet somewhere. That was me in a past life when apparently I had lost my hair clippers and. Or it was like 2004 and that's just what we did. Yeah. Either one. That's how we looked. Either one. So, um, yeah. And, uh, I, well, okay. If I can just kind of roll on with the intro, it's amazing or what, Mike, I think it was uh, 2016 or so that you and I first started talking about, Hey, wouldn't it be cool if we did this? And then we talked about it again in 2017. And then we talked about it again, I'm pretty sure, in 2018. And then for whatever reason, the seeds took hold in 2019. And here we are. Yeah, this is something. I'll, I'll also give some credit to Aaron Porter, who was involved in, in trying to make this, this collaboration happen. Um, but, you know, it was principally me and John, me and John Grubb. Porter, minor, minor character, I would say. Uh, he was the there whole making this I happen. Mean, to give credit, he was, he was, he was there. there. He was present. He was present. He was in the room um, where it happened. Yeah. yeah, but we've been we've been trying to make uh, this happen for a long time, as as John mentioned. Uh, started talking about this very early on. Uh, I think even before Lando was a thing back in the back in the Calabox. It was Calabox. Yep. Um, and yeah, we just we just basically had the recurring the the one year recurring uh, calendar invite in Google, uh, <laughs> and just kept coming back to it. <laughs> And eventually, for whatever reason, it changed. So we've been working uh, with Platform, I guess, probably since the beginning-ish of the year on doing a, a Lando and Platform integration, um, which we're very excited about because if you've used Platform before and you've used Land Lando before, you, you probably recognize that a lot of the things that you can do with, with both are, are very similar. The syntax is very similar. So you know, we thought it would be uh, a pretty cool thing if you could just pull down your platform site into Lando and start working. Um, yeah, so there's a little description in the slide about that sort of thing. So one of the things that's, I think, super cool about this integration is, uh, like, conceptually on a high level, the easiest way to think about it is you basically are just going to be running your platform site locally. Um, and by that, I mean, like, you're going to be using the exact same infrastructure that Platform has, so you're not using, um, you know, sort of Lando approximations of the Platform in infrastructure. They actually generated images and containers for us to use in Lando, so you're using the same stuff uh, that that's running on Platform. So you have, you know, about as close to parity, uh, um, production parity as as you can get, um, and. Uh, so that's that's great. And then the other the other main thing is being able to sort of interact with the remote platform site. Um, so that includes just like pulling you know pulling down your database and your files and your code. Um, in platform land, since platform is more than just Drupal, uh, that actually means like pulling different kinds of relationships. So that might be a MySQL database or a Postgres database or some other thing. Um, and then pulling various mount points 
Uh, you can have more than one sort of like file mount. Um, and then all the normal sort of platform magic happens. So basically anything that's in your platform.yaml file um, should also work in your local Lando installation. So if you have like dependencies specified there or build hooks to, uh, specified there, like all of those things should just work uh, locally as well. So um, to return to the, to the initial sort of concept, conceptualization, it really is just like running platform on your computer. It's probably the best way to think about it. Um, so, uh, these, so these are these are some of the things that sort of work right now. Um, we cut a Lando release yesterday, version 3.0.8, which um, moves uh, support for this integration into alpha status, uh, which basically means that like, you can try it out and it might work for you, uh, but keep the expectations low. Um, but we've been running it internally for some sites uh, for the last few weeks, and it's been it's worked pretty well, especially for Drupal and WordPress sites. Um, I think the there's a I think there's a roadmap slide later on in this, um, but uh, I think that the goal is to get to a like a publicly available uh, or widely available public beta sometime in the end of summer. Um, so something you can try now. It certainly could work for you. Um, but it, it might not. So hence the alpha sort of designation. But all this is available if you get the latest version of Lando. So you can try out all the things that we will be live demoing, live demoing um, in a little bit. So sort of the caveats for features that are not currently available. Um, this only works for PHP projects. Um, so if you are one of those crazy people out there, one of those just intrepid developers who has like a Go project on platform, you are sort of SOL right now. Um, those are things that we want to support in the future, uh, but TBD on when that will actually happen. Um, but all of the, I think I believe all the services, uh, the platform services right now um, are supported in Lando with the exception of uh, network storage and I believe the headless Chrome service. So if you wanted to like spin up a Drupal site with Elasticsearch um, or, uh, yeah, no key basics, sorry, Doug Van. Uh, but a gorilla.bass Easter egg would be great to have in there somehow. Um, uh, yeah, so if you wanted to have a very co a complex sort of like services topology for your Drupal site uh, with the integration, that, that is currently possible. Um, so we actually have a testing example that we run right now, uh, which I, I mean, John, Johnny Grubb, you can, you, can, you can let me know if this is true or not, but it's, it's probably one of the only sites on platform that runs every service that's possibly that that's available to you um certainly uh, the only one run by somebody without a dot platform s uh, platform sh uh email address we do some pretty disgusting things just to test things out right yeah so we so we have so we have so all these things do do work all these services do work but in terms of application support only php for now node will be happening sometime in the future then we'll address the sort of other ones um, so does everyone want to see a live demo <laughs> to see a live demo? Um, so live demos are fun, uh, because like, you know, obviously like this could not work and that would be very bad and sad for everyone. But I feel like it really gets the, the crowd energized to know that the presenter could just bomb so hard in front of them. So let's do it, um, to add some extra sauce to the mix. Um, uh, so I'm going to be doing this live demo using the source version of Lando. Uh, which you know means that there could be more bugs, and I also have an unsupported version of Docker Desktop Edge, which would make this even more exciting. Um, and I did hear that GitHub GitHub was reporting some issues this morning as well. So so we've got a, potentially a nice combination of factors to watch me crash and burn. So if you wanted to follow along and basically do um, what I'm about to demo, uh, what you would need is the um, latest version of Lando, which is 3.0.8, um, a platform account and a PHP site somewhere, um, and then just a platform uh, API token, which is what we currently use to authenticate against platform. So let's slide over to um, my test project. So I think what I'm going to do, we have a very basic Drupal 8 site that I'll spin up, um, and then we'll go over some of the um, some of the basics and, and, and look around at some of the files. Um, uh, if you've used Lano before, I think a lot of these things will be familiar to you. If you've, if you've used platform, a lot of these things will be familiar to you. Um, 
And then if we if we have time, I'll I'll try to pull down a more complicated site and we'll see if that if that breaks or not. So um, to many people who have used uh, Lando before, when you get started with a project, um, uh, oh, sorry, uh, is I'm sorry, Molly, is, does the uh, are is the astrology are the astrology signs good for this live demo, <laughs> or should I stop? Okay. Yeah, awesome. I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we you might need to repeat that whole last passage actually because we started having an astrology chat. Over. Um. Never mind. Just carry on. Long, carry on. We'll we'll pick it up. Okay, I, I just want to make sure that the stars are aligned for this demo. Um, so to start a project, uh, any project on Lando, you run this Lando init command. Um, and now there is this very nice platform sh option that you can pick. Um, so I will do that. Um, at this point, this is where you would enter your um, uh, platform API token. I have already entered our like uh, demo um, token and apparently my business partners as well because, you know, better to commit stuff as him than me. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just like pick uh, our sort of demo project. And we've got these three different projects. Uh, this kitchen sink example is the one I was just describing that literally has all the platform services. Not very useful for a demo. Um, so I'm gonna just pick this basic Drupal 8 site. I'll click on it. And what it will do is it'll connect up to uh, platform, authenticate, exchange keys with it, and then uh, clone down my project. So when this is um, when this is done, I should just have my platform code locally available. Uh, you can see from the nice now we're cooking with fire message that this has happened successfully. Um, and if I go over into my code base, here's like my here's my site in this test folder here. Um, so just I think this was this was forked some time ago from the, the normal platform Drupal eight example. Um, so it's a fairly straightforward uh, example. It's got a MariaDB uh, backend and, uh, and a Redis cache um, and has a couple of like relationships PHP version, but nothing too exciting happening. Uh, very basic uh, sort of spin up. Um, and if you'll notice the, uh, um, so oh, I, added, I added those, but those are not, those are not required. This is what the Lando file for a, a platform project looks like by default. Um, this is great, obviously very simple. Um, you can add your normal Lando customizations on top of this if you so wish, uh, but this is all that is required. Uh, and that is because Lando will basically read in all of your platform configuration and use that to configure what your local environment uh, should look like. And that's nice because now you don't have sort of competing concerns, you know, edit this file for local, edit this file for production, whatever. Um, so at this point, we should be able to proceed with the Lando start command. Um, and as, as we were uh, mentioning before, uh, the um, uh, uh, Lando, Lando will basically run platform locally for you. So it'll, it'll grab platform SH containers and, and run them locally. And it'll go through and do the platform, uh, the necessary platform like build steps and stuff. So I believe um, this will install the platform CLI, so you can use that locally. Um, but it'll also go through, you might even recognize sort of the way this looks. It looks pretty much exactly the same um, as, the, uh, as the output that you get on platform directly. Um, so it's just going through and running your, your composer install. Um, not a lot of stuff because this is just a normal Drupal 8 site. So we'll just like let it proceed. Happy to answer any questions as we let the internet do its magic working. I got one. Oh yeah. Because oh, yeah. I'll bet Kevin Kalen's curious about it. So you're configuring this entire thing with a platform app YAML, which is pretty awesome. The platform config files instead of the Lando config files straight up. So, and if this is secret sauce, you know, I understand. But are you translating directly into like, a, are you parsing that into a Lando config under the hood and then reading that, or are you reading this indirectly and made, making magic happen? Yeah. So the I think the, the the primary thing that that is happening behind the scenes is we've we we are trying to replicate some of so Lando is replicating some of the necessary parts of the platform infrastructure, um, but since we're using platform images and containers, uh, these images and containers, as as you know, Johnny Grubb do a lot of the setup on their own. So if we just basically give them the right instructions, then they're just gonna do it. Um, 
So that's what that, that is more or less what Lando is doing is just taking the reading the information from the platform config files and then um, uh, using the platform images to spin up basically what you would have on platform. Um, there's a small difference. So there are some Lando things that we do. So for example, like, you know, there's no, uh, obviously like we have our own proxy to handle the nice URL. So we'll read your routes YAML file and, and put that into Lando proxyisms. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll mount your directory and set up file sharing and your SSH keys. So there's still a lot of the Lando secret sauce that's happening too. It's, uh, um, you know, definitely a nice mix of both of them. Um, so, uh, so at this point, you know, we have our Drupal site running. Um, you can see that I got, I got this nice, nice helpful error that tells me that I'm an, on an unsupported version of Docker desktop. Uh, so if, if you're someone who also gets this error <laughs> or warning, I would recommend that you don't use an unsupported version of Docker desktop. So do as I say, not as I do. Um, so at this point, we should have our Drupal site running. Um, there is also this Lando pull command. Let me maybe bump the screen up. Uh, which will allow me to pull a, a platform relationship. So this is, this is a, um, a platform relationship is, uh, will look like this right here. So I have a relationship from my application container to my database called the database. So I can pull that relationship remote from the remote platform instance. Um, and then, uh, I can also pull down mounts. So here are some mounts for this uh, site. The one that I'm most interested in is my sort of my Drupal files. If I can so, give like a really super quickie explanation of what relationships and mounts and all that stuff means. We put all these different pieces in different containers. So MySQL lives in a container of its own. PHP and the web server live in a container of their own. And so they need to be able to speak to each other via TCP, of course. So that's the relationship that Mike is talking about. It's basically, you specify these couple of lines of YAML, and that tells the two things that they need to be able to speak to each other. And so we hide, or not really hide, but we st stuff the configuration information as far as the address where you, where PHP can find the MySQL container, like what, what host and what port, et cetera. We put that into a relationship is what we call that. It shows up as an environment variable. So that's how they know how to speak to each other, or where to find each other, rather. So oh. carry on. And if you... Or if you think that this is a WordPress site, it's not going to work. There we go. So right now it'll pull my pull that relationship, my remote relationship called database. And I accidentally tried to pull uh, in my in my uh, my bash remembering thing. Uh, it remembered that I was trying to grab WordPress files before, which is not correct. So I switched it to Drupal files, which is correct. Now you can see that it's pulled down. So the M, the M flag stands for mount and the R flag stands for relationship. You can pass in as many as you want. There are some, uh, you can definitely have platform configurations with multiple relationships, multiple mount points. So you can, you could pass in a very long string of things if you have lots of stuff. So at this point I should have uh, the, um, yes, thank you, Doug Van, <laughs> history, bash history. Um, so at this point we should actually have the Drupal site running locally, uh, which I will, set up and there it is so i've got my snazzy can everyone see the drupal site there very nice so i've got my drupal site running locally pulled the database down and all that so very nice um, now let's explore sort of what's happened a little bit more um, so if you run Lando, you'll get a bunch of uh, certain different commands that you can use, uh, including uh, Drush. Um, we also will provide sort of a CLI way to connect to relationships. So if I wanted to like directly access that database relationship, I could do Lando database, and it just drops me into the um, MySQL shell uh, locally, so I can like do stuff on that database. So if I just do like I think use main is that the one? Yeah show tables, there's all my Drupal tables that I just pulled down. Um, I can run sort of the Drush commands, all available. So just clearing my cache. Plan Drush. Uh, let's see. And then I also have a a access to the, uh, we'll install the platform CLI. So if I just do, what is it? Off, who am I? Off info. So it just knows, oh yeah, this is the this is the Lando bot doing its thing. 
Um, and then if you haven't used Lando before, a lot of the other commands I think are, are fairly straightforward, starting and stopping and SSHing into um, uh, certain, certain uh, um, into any of the containers if you'd like to do that. Um, running PHP directly, running Composer directly, destroying the application, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so land, um, they do not behave exactly the same as, as Pantheon, Doug Van. Um, so I mean, Pantheon, there's, there's um, you know, there's, uh, you know, a Drupal site has a database and it has, a, um, you know, the, the Drupal files and you're sort of like pushing and pulling those things. And then there's a, the same sort of versions of those for WordPress. And, and, that, and, that, and that's more or less sort of what it's going to be. Um, for platform, you, you basically specify what you want those things to be. So I can have a platform site that has three databases. One of them is MySQL, one of them is Postgres, one of them is MongoDB and I could have files mounted in four different locations. So the commands are a little bit different. Um, so for, for um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Johnny Grab. You don't actually wanna have that set up, but you can have that set up. Um, so uh, the Lando pull command, you can specify any number of those databases, any number of those mounts that you wanna pull down. So in a more complicated example, if I had, if I had another database, uh, Postgres database, uh, that I use for some other information, I could pull that database down as well. So you really can access all the sort of services that you're running. Um, so we'll do we'll do a, a, a short sort of demo of that happening, I guess. Which is um, so if I wanted to go in and say so the the, the default sort of Drupal eight recipe, uh, sorry, um, repo that I'm using here, which is like the platform uh, template. Uh, by default, um, runs a Redis cache. So if I do a um, Lando info, I can see that I actually have a container that is running that platform Redis cache. But I can't really do anything with it yet because I haven't, uh, as, as John Garub was saying earlier, I haven't exposed sort of the cache, um, my app server to that cache. Um, but you can do that quite easily. Um, the same way that you would do it on platform, and that is to uncomment this one line um, and tell your application, hey, I want to be able to talk to the, the Redis cache. So let's just do that and then do a Lando rebuild, which will basically turn that relationship on. And after we do that, we should be able to uh, connect a Drupal directly to Redis. Um, so if you've done this sort of exercise uh, sort of manually with Lando or with platform, Sometimes it can be a little bit uh, tricky, um, but we'll show here that it's actually quite simple. Um, and it's nice that you basically can edit all of the platform files uh, and then rebuild them in Lando and see sort of what happens. So, you know, if you, if you are someone who wants to like do your sort of do your platform configuration first before you push it up to platform, you know, you can try it out on Lando and then and then push it up. Um, and that can save you a lot of time because it's going to be a lot faster doing it locally than it That's is the to dream. push it directly. Yes, to, that, is yes the dream. that is the dream. So it's going to go through and do the whole build process again. Um, and then when it's done, we should be able to grab the, uh, we should be able to set up the Redis cache. Um, more or less by just turning the Drupal module on. Um, which I already have installed. However, if you didn't have it installed, you could run this, you know, Lando Composer require Drupal Redis, uh, and you would get you would get that. Um, so I'm just going to do a Lando Drush ULI because I, because Mike Milano set up the site and he used a real password <laughs> instead of one that's easy to remember, which is you know good, good for him, <laughs> but certainly not what I would have done. Uh, so let's just get to our Drupal site. So here we are in the Drupals. And I can just go here and I believe Redis is in there. Click on it. We can see that it's been enabled. And now if I go to my uh, Drupal status report, um, I can see that Redis is on. So extremely simple to set that up. I just had to remove. I had to remove one line, do a Lando rebuild, and turn the Redis cache, Redis module on. Um, so very, very easy to do things like this. Um, 
Another cool, so just to give you an example of sort of what a more complicated situation would look like, um, here is like the, uh, um, just the MariaDB service, but you could, we could pick any of these services. I'm just picking this one because uh, I think you've, you've got some interesting configuration options. So say I wanted to do a more complicated uh, sort of setup like this one. I could literally just copy and paste this from the platform docs, go to my services.yaml, maybe give it a, another name so there's no sort of namespace collision. And now if I, if I rebuild the service, I'm gonna get exactly this on my Lando as well. So let's just, uh, well. Okay. So, hey, just for the crowd here. So what he just dropped in there is um, by default a database. So he's specifying a couple of different containers here. The DB is the MySQL container. The cache container is the Redis container that he just spun up. The second DB container that he spun up is essentially a, a totally separate instance of a database container. And what he's got defined in there is a bunch of configuration for specifying different databases within that database server container. So I'm pretty impressed uh, along with uh, some rather um, what I consider a uh, yellow to green belt configuration that um, creates different users, gives them different permissions. And I'm pretty impressed that all this stuff actually works right now. So that's cool. And that is exactly why I'm showing it. Johnny well Rowe. done. Um, so that you, so I, you users should understand that if they, whatever they put into their services.yaml, it should behave on Lando like it behaves on platform. So that's why I have chosen this more complicated example. Um, so if it, it, we can also, um, what, where did it go? Uh, so another nice thing there too is to like give, uh, to like let our application speak to these relationships. Um, so let's add that to our, uh, add that in here and maybe call this some different, make sure you name them correctly. Um, and now, so this would be the part where the demo would blow up. So everyone hold, hold on. So when this finishes uh, uh, rebuilding, we should have, like, as Johnny Grubb mentioned, a separate database service that has multiple endpoints that we can connect to. Um, so that is very cool. Um, so while that's happening, that means that we could also go in and say, you know what, I need solar. Here it is in the docs. Uh, like here's some configuration for it. Let me start from here, um, paste it in, see what happens. And you can do that for, for all of the services that are, that are in here. So you can actually build fairly complicated uh, complex um, uh, sort of like service topologies locally um, before you even get to platform, which is which is pretty nice. So if you wanted to add a memcache thing in there, you can do that. So you know it made it made writing the docs for Lando uh, for this integration very easy because a lot of the docs was just like go over here and read this one instead, <laughs> um, and just do that and it'll work. Um, so let's return to looks like did this finish already. Uh, yes, and you can see here that I have the second database service now. And if I do a Lando, um, it should give me commands, separate commands to access those relationships. So if I wanted to access that second database, Lando database two, here I am, show databases. I think it gives you like two, and here's the two legacy and main. Those were the ones that I specified here. So you can see it's all very easy to do. Um, it's beautiful. You know, it's very beautiful. So, and then the, I think the coolest thing about all of this is if I wanted to just move on, Lando destroy project is gone. So everything I just did, I just removed very easily. So um, what I'll do now is pull a more complex site. So this is a, uh, a small nonprofit site that, that's actually on WordPress. Um, so sorry for the Drupal people. I know this is DrupalCon, but the point is to show a more difficult uh, setup. We're off the island now, like as of years ago. So this is okay. Yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. Um, so let's pull this one down and uh, give you a sense of a more complex setup. Um, and how that works. So this, in this example, I think Grunt is installed behind the scenes. Some build steps are run to compile SAS. Uh, some WordPress dependencies are installed via Composer. Um, 
including including one I think that requires some sort of authentication. Um, so much more complex uh, sort of setup. Um, and while that is happening, I, did I, I don't know if I've missed any. Well, I think, uh, well, we're, questions. we've got some interesting chatter about your sense of humor, I think, in some of these command line things. Um, John Boyer had an oh, interesting yeah, yeah. question about, um, about routes and domain names, auto-generated domain names. Do you look to the routes.yaml file to set any of that stuff up yet? Is it respected? Yep, so we'll we'll use the information in the routes.yaml. Um, you can still continue to provide um, uh, you can still continue to provide uh, your own sort of proxy configuration in Lando and it should just do both. So um, but I, I, I would say that it makes it makes sense to just continue to, to if you want to configure different routes, just use the routes.yaml um, even even locally because that's going to give you you know what you get on on platform. Any Lando specific configuration that you do is obviously not going to give you those things when you when you push it up to uh, to platform. I think that was another uh, question so. that somebody had that you probably kind of. I, I think I understand the answer is yes, but the Lando, if you have more specific Oops. Lando configuration than what you are able to stuff into platform YAML configuration, Lando YAML is still. Um, Yep, yeah, you can still do all the normal uh, Lando things. Cool. So, for example, I see that Kevin asked this question to make a DB snap snapshot. So, um, yeah, so Lando has a, 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 has an events system. Uh, so, if you wanted to automatically do a DB export or snapshot before you destroy a site or do something else, uh, that's something that you could set up um, uh, in Lando. So, let's get this site now. You can install whatever you want to install. Is there any other questions coming through? I mean, I'm just kind of curious how much coffee you drink and these sort of like feedback messages about this app is pay the iron price and such this like the like the phoenix from the fire or whatever the heck where do you get this stuff man um well making something like this is actually very difficult so <laughs> and fairly unrewarding so you have to you have to like sort of get some kicks out of it well i so. get lots of kicks out of every time i play with lando i'm sure I'm lots so of other people do too and we might have we might have reached the point where the demo has crashed, but let's explore a little bit. I believe that the uh, the hop in uh, situation is like CPU. Let's just try to do a, a refresh really quick and see if we can get this one get this one going. Oh yeah, Google Chrome definitely using my CPU by quite a bit. Yeah, and I am I am not I am not on Linux, so All right. Let's see what's going on. So Doug Van, we are there's going to be a like plugin repository available at some point soonish. Uh, so people can sort of share things in that in the way that you're describing. Um, we do have a lot of these like guides on, in the Lando docs as well um, that I know that people uh, use uh, to like talk about very specific uh, sort of use cases. So, all right, let's try this all again now.
One more time. There we go, that looks more promising. Um, uh, so the right now, the um, there are a couple of changes that we have to make to make like rando plugins easier to distribute. Um, but once those, once that happens, I, we're, we're hoping to find a group of maybe 10 or 15 people who have either written plugins or are interested in writing plugins. Uh, because at some point, like everything cannot go into Lando core. So, um, and like, we don't have, you know, our team is a fairly small team and we don't have a hundred percent like domain knowledge coverage of all possible things that you can do. So um, we're very excited to get like the sort of plugin system rolling. Um, that said, like most plugin systems fail. Uh, like it's actually very hard to like build a real plugin ecosystem. So um, it will definitely require people like you, Doug Van, and you, Aaron Felity, to like make the dream a reality. Okay, so I've got this uh, WordPress site now, and let's just like look at the code really quickly. So this is a little bit special. It's got a Redis extension installed. It's got database and Redis uh, running um, by default. It installs uh, via Composer. It also installs like the Grunt CLI. There's some like authentication required, um, which please don't like copy that. <laughs> Um, and then there's this, these sort of build steps which compile uh, SAS uh, for us. So let's just run a Lando start, and then we'll do a Lando pull and see if we can get this site running with a lot more um, uh, with a lot more steps involved. Yeah, and I, I don't know. Uh, I actually don't know if that key is sensitive or not, Kevin. Um, I, su I suspect that it actually isn't, but I'm not super familiar with this. Oh. Actually, I also forgot. I need to switch the branch here. Yeah, so that, that's a key you don't want to share, obviously. <laughs> uh, unless you do. I mean, there's probably plenty of people out here that would be interested. All right. Sorry, we had to switch to a different branch that has the platform stuff set up for this and I made just for this demo. And now we'll start to start, start our site. Um, so very similar to what we saw for the Drupal site, it's gonna pull down the platform services that we need um, based on what's in the sort of platform.yaml file. It'll run through all the build steps. So it'll it'll grab, uh, it'll globally install the Grunt CLI, which this, this uh, project requires. Um, it'll globally install some composer dependencies that we need. It'll do the, uh, it'll install all the, the, um, compose, the composer.json dependencies. It'll install the platform CLI. Um, and then it will run the SAS build steps. So it'll actually compile SAS as part of the startup process here. Um, and then we should be able to do the same Lando pull command. Um, so we'll pull the database relationship, but since it's a WordPress site, we'll be pulling a different mount, which is the like web WP content uploads or whatever directory. Um, and once those things are done, we should have a fully running uh, WordPress site for this like small nonprofit that we did some, some work for. Um, and while we're waiting for all these things to install, uh, is there, are there any other questions about the awesomeness that you are witnessing. Drupal 9 migrations with Lando and platform. Now that might be a, that might be a better question for you, for you, John Grubb. Than well, <laughs> there's a lot of nuance. <laughs> there's a lot of nuance Sorry to in that question. That one. Um, so I could, I would have to, of course, guess at a whole ton of things, and so you can feel free to correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. But uh, you're talking about a migration from a currently running Drupal seven site to a to be born Drupal nine site, and so presumably you're going to be using the migrate module, something from the migrate module ecosystem in Drupal nine to read the database from the Drupal seven site and import the data into the new Drupal 9 database. So, okay, cool. Um, 
So one thing that you can do presumably on, on Lando, but you can definitely do on platform SH, although it would be a little bit slower and more laborious. So if you could do this in a, in a local environment, it would definitely save you, you know, at least some network round trips. Um, because everything is containerized into separate containers, you could theoretically, um, I mean, gee whiz, this is going to be, uh, you know, I mean, this, I, uh, this is a probably an 18 month development effort on your part. I'm just guessing. So, I mean, it's pretty stupid. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing in a lot of, I'm taking some really wide swings at this. Okay. Um, theoretically, here's a thing you could do. If your Drupal 7 site is currently running on platform, it is theoretically possible for you to bring up your Drupal 9 site in the same project with your Drupal 7 website into a different application container. Theoretically, I don't think I would advise this, but what that would allow you to do is to have access to both the databases that both of those websites require. So your Drupal 7 site would have its database sitting here. Your Drupal 9 site would be in the same uh, project with its own database, but your Drupal 9 site, you could create a relationship to the Drupal 7 database and be able to run your uh, your migrate scripts and to bring the Drupal 7 content into Drupal 9. That is a thing you could theoretically do. Um, probably easier would be to have two separate projects and just bring up a separate database in, in your Drupal 9. Like now your Drupal 9 project is ready to go and you need to import content. I think the much l easier way to do it with a lot fewer music moving pieces Say your Drupal 7 site lives on Platform SH right now. Uh, take a copy of that database, create a new database endpoint per Mike's uh, demo a little bit, uh, like you did just a little bit ag ago, and create essentially a new database within the database container that you can copy your Drupal 7 database into, and then you can run your migrate scripts against that. Um, that would be way easier to reason about but would require you to have two separate sites honestly the spend in two different sites you're probably going to save um in hair and wanting to uh, kill yourself trying to run two different sites in one project um two completely different websites that sounds like a lot of things to try and not break at the same time so i don't know if that answers your question or gives you any kind of kind of ideas um, yeah, I guess it really kind of depends on, as I think I see some stuff scrolling by, yeah, it depends on a bunch of things, um, database size and how frequently the content is updated. Um, if you need to migrate things in more or less real time before the flip over to the new site. But if you don't have that sort of constant, um, are you, let me know when your stuff is done scrolling, Mike, because. Oh, I'll, oh, I'll let okay. you know. Because, right you know, I just keep talking until somebody tells me to shut up generally. Um, but anyway, it did just really kind of depends on it depends on a whole lot of things. So um, and unfortunately, a lot of them fall into the application domain in addition to the infrastructure that's sitting underneath it. So um, that is a really nuanced question to to try and sum up. <laughs> I, uh, well, if it makes you feel any better, Johnny Grubb, now is the time to okay, shut up. Cool. If you want the full, um, you know, hour-long interrogation, then please get in, in touch with us at Platform SH. And, um. So, uh, so while so while uh, while John was discussing the finer points of Drupal migrations, um, we were able to finish the so the sort of build step there, and then we were we ran the that Lando pull command to grab our database and our files, um, which are still downloading uh, currently. So, don't know if that's going to make a huge difference, but you can see here I'm running, here's the WordPress site running locally. Um, so very easy to do. Um, you know, if you have a platform site and you have a platform API token and you have Lando, you can get your entire site running locally um, using all of the configuration on your pla in your platform uh, files using the exact same containers that that platform is running locally in, in three easy steps. Um, and depending on the size of your site and your internet connection, you know, that could be anywhere between a few minutes or, you know, a few minutes more. So uh, we are very excited to do this. Uh, we run most of our, our sites at Tandem on platform. So this has been, we've been piloting this integration for uh, the last few weeks and it's really saved us a whole bunch of time. So we are very excited about uh, getting it out to the wider public. 
Um, and I'm happy to, I don't know what the like room policy is in the virtual space, but I'm happy to stick around and ask, answer any other questions. Um, but also uh, thank you everyone for, for coming and um, feel free to ask any questions. I guess there's a plot, the platform booth is a place where you can uh, ask questions, but you can also ask questions about this, I think in either the platform or the Lando Slack channels, um, which I think are fairly, fairly easy to find on the interwebs. Um, I don't know if, if John, if you have any parting no, words. This is awesome. Well done. And thanks for making it happen. And thanks for your patience while we uh, got here. And apologies to all those who wanted this demo to crash <laughs> and burn. Maybe, maybe next, maybe next time. All right, Groovy. I guess I'm going to go to the platform SH booth. So if anybody has any further questions about this stuff, maybe I could answer some easy ones. Otherwise, I'll push you over to Mike. Thanks, Mike. All right. Bye, John. Yeah, and I'm happy to, happy to stick around to anyone who has any, uh, anyone has any questions. I will leave when the amount of participants gets below, let's say, 20. <laughs> All right. Peace. Bye, John. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, Alec. <laughs> you never disappoint, Kevin. You never disappoint. If, I mean, if you can if you can keep more than twenty people here, <laughs> definitely. Then I think I think I think you deserve to trap me in this in this purgatory. <laughs> oh, thanks for coming, Brett. Yes, Doug Van, I saw you throw that up a few times. Um, to all that are still remaining, uh, Lando is a free and open source uh, project um, that is done basically on volunteer time. A lot of people think that making Lando is my full-time job. Uh, it is not. <laughs> it is actually my sort of like extracurricular activity. Um, same with all the other people who um, work on Lando, including some of the very people who are in this uh, in this presentation right now. So. If you use Lando and you like Lando and you want to, or you just want to support open source uh, projects, then I would highly encourage you to go to lando.dev slash sponsor and, uh, and contribute to the project um, so that all the people who's worked on this, uh, all their hard work um, is compensated as, as much as, as can be. Certainly is a labor of love to some degree, but you know, thousands and thousands of hours of, of development time, um, you know, Definitely appreciated. So, yeah, it looks like it looks like Kevin, you're doing a good job uh, keeping this uh, above twenty. Still got a long way to go. Yes, Doug Van. There have been, a, I think there there have been three uh, three agency sponsors. Um, we certainly would love to find some more. So if that is you, I would highly encourage you to do that. Um, so Last Call Media, uh, who is at DrupalCon, uh, was the first, I believe, um, to sponsor. Um, uh, ditto for Lullabot. And uh, recently, uh, Site Crafting uh, sponsored as well. So those are the three um, sort of like agency sponsors that have happened. But there are, um, if you go to the GitHub page, uh, I think there are maybe GitHub seventy something total sponsors. Yeah, so there are seventy six uh, people currently sponsoring Lando. Um, so thanks to all those people. Um, but uh, Platform and uh, Animazy are also uh, sort of like high level sponsors of Lando. Um, there also is a is a, a forthcoming uh, integration. I know this is a platform <laughs> uh, session, uh, but there is a forthcoming uh, integration with Lagoon as well, which uh, if you go over to their booth, you might be able to learn some more about. But that's also available for sort of alpha testing too, if people are interested in going over there. Um, and uh, and Pan Pantheon has been a they're not they're not actually not on the website yet because we're trying to coordinate some stuff with them. But they've they've been a long sponsor as well, so uh, they're not on the website. But also shout out to to them. They've been a sponsor for a very, very, very long time. Um, so we love all of them and all of what they do as well. And Doug Van, you are a beautiful man. Appreciate all that you do.
guess we're gonna have to get some more. Uh, so actually, Doug Van, um, we uh, so Alec, Alec has been working on a a uh, Lando store recently, um, and I think we're gonna have some some more interesting items there. So I might be able to send you some more swag uh, in a little bit as well. But we're thinking mugs and hoodies, maybe some of these pink bandanas. Uh, I think would be nice. Um, and, uh, and maybe, maybe some more, some more avant-garde, uh, sort of choices. Um, and so I always, always appreciate the, uh, the Cyrillic as well. Um, oh, interesting. I hadn't thought about a Hawaiian shirt. That could be a, that could be a good call. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think it'd be great to have all kinds of, all kinds of, uh, merchandise, obviously. And hot pink is such a great color too, so... Bye bye, Doug Van. At the very least, I feel like Aaron, we can make you a uh, a special limited edition Hawaiian Hawaiian shirt. All right, I know that I said I would wait till 20, but apparently I lied. And if there's no other questions, I am going to close this out. And uh, thanks to all, thanks to everyone who came. Um, I hope you're as excited about uh, the work that we're doing with Platform as we are. Um, and more importantly, I hope that it makes your development experience more pleasant in general uh, once you try it out. And uh, thanks to everyone for coming, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your DrupalCon global experience. Bye-bye.